Gospel of the Lord, November the 2nd, 2013, Luke 23, 44, 46, 50, 52, 53, 24, 1, 6. It was now about the sixth hour, and the sun's light failed, so that darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the sanctuary was torn right down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, saying, Father, in your hands I commit my spirit. With these words he expired. And now, a member of the council arrived, a good and upright man named Joseph. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. He then took it down, wrapped it in a shroud, and put it in a tomb which was hewn in stone, and which had never held a body. On the first day of the week, at the first sign of dawn, they went to the tomb with the spices that they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, but on entering, they could not find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled about this, two men in brilliant clothes suddenly appeared at their side. Terrified, the women bowed their heads to the ground, but the two said to them, Why look come on the dead for someone who is alive? He is not here, he has risen. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This beautiful, beautiful synthesis of the death and resurrection of our Lord follows our reflection the day before yesterday, where on the same Gospel of Luke in chapter 13, we had read about Jesus looking at Jerusalem saying, Jerusalem, you that kill and stone the prophet sent to you. And then saying, your house will be left alone. And this is exactly what happened. The Lord was hanging on the cross and about 12 o'clock, which corresponds to the sixth hour, there was an eclipse. So it became dark for three hours until 3 p.m., which corresponds to the ninth hour. Now, the veil of the country, which separated the Sanctus Sanctorum, which was the most holy place, was torn right down the middle. And that curtain was made out of the skin of lamps. The skin of lamps is a very strong material practically impossible to be torn if not cut but it torn so as a sign so as the Jews would know that the sanctuary, their sanctuary was empty that the glory of the Lord would not would not be there anymore at the very same time the Lord cried out with a loud voice, which, which is always something surprising, because when you're hanging, when you're hanging from the cross, death basically becomes out of suffocation, because the weight, your weight, pulls you down, and you suffocate. But the evangelist is intent on saying that he say it in a loud voice. These beautiful words of the Psalm 31st. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And then he inspired. We also see how this Joseph, a member of the council, asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. It was a Friday. And he had very little time because at 6 o'clock in the afternoon, the Vesper would start for the Shabbat, which was the mandatory rest on, on Saturday. So we, they quickly took Jesus down, they wrapped it in the shroud, the shroud of Turin, of Torino, which we still have, and they put it in a tomb. Now, after three days, that is Friday, the Saturday and then Sunday in the morning. 
at the first da sign of down, at the very first time that they could go back to labor because all Saturday they couldn't do anything. The women went to prepare his body because they hadn't been able to prepare him for death. They had prepared spices so that they would fix his body. And they were thinking, they were expecting to find his dead body there. But they found the temple, right? They saw that the stone had been rolled away, but they couldn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. And as, and as puzzled as they were, suddenly there are two angels with brilliant, with um, very brilliant clothes, and they become terrified. But they ask this beautiful question Why look among the dead for someone who is alive? He has risen. We tend to forget. And then we also tend not to completely grasp that the faith that we have in the Lord is a faith on someone who was dead and then resurrected. The people that wanted to kill the Lord should have been very happy when he died on the cross, thinking that he had been destroyed. Little did they know that they were fulfilling the prophecies on the Lord, and on the third day the Lord would resurrect glorious, never to be dead again. He died once, but resurrected will never be dead again, for death does not have anything to do with the glorious Jesus Christ. And if it was only a matter of a situation or, or, or a matter pertaining only to him, it will be nice nonetheless. But the great thing for you and me is that it's not only for him, but for you and me. This life eternal, this plenitude of life, of health, of love, of joy is for you and for me if we can remain faithful to his love if we can keep on straining ourselves doing as much as we can to be faithful to his love we have the guarantee that we too will be resurrected from the death because he loves us he loves you and he loves you and he loves me. And I would have to say the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit loves you and loves me too. And that is our guarantee that you and me will also be rising from the death. Death, as Shakespeare would say, a necessary end is only a door. It's only a door that we have to trespass to find our life eternal on the other side. Today we are remembering all our debts. Let us pray, our Father in heaven, that by the merits of the, of the Lord He may grant His mercy on all of them, that they might be allowed to be on His presence, and that on His grace and on His mercy He would make us also worthy of entering heaven. God bless you all, brothers.